I didn't start smoking weed till I was 45. Can you believe that? Yeah. That was so good. It happens. Yeah. I'm trying to make up for it now, though. It's good. It's a good place to be, California, for weed. Just for weed, though. Just for weed. And the weather. And the weather. Not the people. Nothing else. You can you can't say that. I can say that. Why? I've been here for 12 years. I know, but you can't say that LA people suck. I can say LA people suck. <gasps> You're gonna have no one's gonna come on your show anymore. They're not from LA, and they're gonna come anyway. Hi guys, welcome to Tacos and Shawarma. Sebastian's not here today because he's sick, so he didn't come. And uh, we have a special guest. His name is Opie. Actually, met him at the bagel shop, and we started talking. And somehow he ended up here because he has like a TikTok. He talks about relationships or his personal dating life, right? So I'm I'm life experience, and this is like more life experience, right? Absolutely. And he watched all, a lot of episodes before he came here, so he said he has a lot of questions. So many. Okay, what's your first one? How many siblings do you have? One. Half. Half sibling. I'm the oldest. You are the oldest. I'm the oldest. And that's your personality type. I know. Yeah, you got to chill that back a little bit. Can't help it. If if it's your personality type, how could you change it? Because when we're kids, Uh we're programmed a certain way. Right. Right. And not an intentionally mean way. Just our parents bring us up with their background. Wait, are you saying I'm mean? I didn't say mean. You said mean way. Right. So I don't mean that. I don't mean that uh, our parents are intentionally mean when they bring us up because all parents screw up. Oh, you could tell that I had mean parents? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I did. I can tell that you're not happy. I don't know if you had mean parents Uh because my philosophy is whoever those people were did the best they could with what they had. Okay. Sorry, mom. No, it's okay. Mom did the best she could, dad or stepdad or whoever did the best he could. Some of them were shit. Mm Mm-hmm. But now- Right. You're an adult. I'm, I am an adult. You can't use them as a crutch anymore. When you're a kid, you use them as a crutch. When you hit your 20s or so, especially into the 30s, you start to realize, okay, they did what they did, but now I'm here. So what am I going to do? I'm trying my best too. You're trying your best or you're doing your best? Try usually I'm, means fail. I'm going to try to do something. Well, no, I'm doing the, I guess I'm doing my best. I mean, I I could do more. So I can't say I'm doing my best. I'm doing as much as I could take right now. But there is definitely more self-mastery that I can do. And I know that I feel like the point of us being here is to master ourselves. So I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I don't know about that whole master thing. I, I took shrooms and I was in Bali. And that's what the shrooms told me is that we have to like, master ourselves i don't know if he the shrooms didn't tell you you told you and all i'm saying is the semantic of the word master and not to sound like a hippie or anything but this whole thing that we're doing it's a journey on different levels right right there is no mastering you master when they put you six feet into the ground you look back and you say did i do okay was i nice to people was i you know intentionally mean and, and, and that's how you kind of master it. But there's no master. It's we do the best we can. Well, yeah. I mean, I just mean like, let's say if you have like things about yourself that you know you can do better. Let's say if you're overweight, right? And you know you have to lose the weight, but it's hard. It's hard to lose weight. But if you don't try at it and you just stay fat your whole life, then you kind of. But did- then you don't really want it. Is there anything in your life that you really, really wanted that you haven't gotten? No. I'm not talking about Andrew Tate. I'm just talking about. We're not there yet, but uh, no. I. Because you wanted it. Yes. When you wanted to lose weight, you did. Yes. When you wanted to date, you didn't. I didn't. If I wanted to date, I didn't. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, I'm just repeating what oh. you said. Um, I don't know. I have this this thing where, where I like I, I preach on TikTok. Like, if you really want to find someone, uh-huh. stop. 
Yeah. Stop everything. Stop the dating apps. I know you're not on dating apps. Stop the dating apps. Stop hunting. Stop looking. Stop searching. Stop all of it. When you're in a position where you want to find someone, find yourself, right? Stop all the nonsense. Do things. You go hiking if you like to hike. Go bowling by yourself. Go to the bagel shop by yourself because eventually you will meet like-minded people. Right. And one of those like-minded people might be the guy that you're hoping to find. Maybe. I've never um, looked for a man, so I can't really. You're looking now. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. No? No. No. Like, I say I want a man, but when I really think about it, like, where is there room for one, you know, in my life? Like, I'm so stuck in my ways of things. Like, my, I have a kid. I have the own parent. You know what I mean? I have, mm-hmm. like... I have just like my way and then I'd have to like add this whole person into my life and men are a lot of work. You know what I mean? So it's like, do I really want all that? Maybe that's because of your past experiences and your lack of knowing what it is you're looking for. Yeah. Because I think the right person now, don't get me wrong. I don't know about this whole, this uh, pixie dust thing called love and all this other, all I know is is the here and now. Mm-hmm. And if you're with someone, it's great. It goes for as long as it goes. So you don't believe in like uh, marriage? Well, I mean, it's it's a great concept, but what's the benefit as a man? Like, well, what, what, I'll tell what, you what it, the benefit is. I was reading some of my comments. It's not the first time I've heard it too. They say that when men get old, they end up in the nursing home and nobody comes to visit them. Like their kids don't come. They're what? Like no, they're just they die alone. So okay, right now you might not think it's a benefit. Well, also like, don't you want to have a connection with somebody and like trust that person to be there for you when you need them? So I'm on the f- I'm I'm a little bit like you said earlier. I'm a little bit further down with you than you. Right. I did the marriage thing twice already. Okay. The first time I had five kids. I'm very close with all of my kids. Okay. Who do I want? What What do I need? Not what do I need a woman for? What do I need to get married for? Right now. So that I won't die alone? Then that's a selfish thought because you're hoping that you die first and the idiot you leave behind dies alone. Yeah, huh? So I don't- But you're s- going to be alone Who am I? if you're not married. Regardless, you're going to die alone. Well, first of all, not but you so have bad. kids, right? So I, have I guess kids. it's different. I have nephews. I have family. I'm very close with all of them. I just talked to one on the way here. Okay. Well, well and, I've and never been married, so I don't know. My my relationships usually have like a two year lifespan. Yeah, I had one guy that I dated on and off for ten years, and he was like a really good guy, and I fucked it up. But besides him, all the guys I've dated were not really good. So I guess that's why my my out view. But but also I talk to other women who are dating and I haven't met like one woman who's like truly like happy. I've always hear like these horrible stories of like what men do. You know what I mean? In marriage? No, just in relationships. I don't know anyone who's like superly happily married. And even like my grandmother, right? Well, she's old school. She only been with one man, but she's like. Which is also the wrong thing to say, you know, which, which what I said was, you don't need a man, you just need a kid. But I don't even think that's true. I don't think you should have kids without a husband or a man. I don't think you should ever be a single mom. Like, well, I don't think that's the first choice. Yeah, right? but that's, first choice I don't think it should couple, be a choice at a couple all. Rate, what do you mean it should be a choice? Like, I don't think any woman should put herself through single motherhood. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. Right, but sometimes you don't have a choice. I mean, you do. Well, you don't. Your body, your choice. Right. But if you have a kid. Then your life is going to be a lot harder by yourself. I'm not saying it's not. But sometimes you don't have a choice. You're in a woman in a situation where she's pregnant far along and all of a sudden the guy turns into a whatever. Oh, yeah. That's different. But I'm saying if you know that the guy is not a good guy, you probably should, you know, think of your options. Right. Right. My parents told me, you don't need a man. You just need a, a kid. 
That's like the wrong thing At to say. At what point in your life did they tell you this? Now? Or my when you were younger? Life, my whole life. You don't need a man, you need a kid? Yeah. What She's like, you know, you don't need a man. You just, every woman needs a child, but she doesn't really need a man. Oh, a child. Yeah. Hmm. But I don't, I think that's like the wrong advice to tell women. I think Ooh. it's the opposite. I don't think, I don't know if women need men, but they definitely need a man if they want a child. But going back to the thing, what's the benefit? Of being married? Of be, for me. But right? you're, you already had your kids and you did everything. Yeah. Okay, why didn't it work out? Uh, you know, the first time it didn't work out because it was, was people going to hear this now, huh? Um, I guess we grew apart. Doesn't everybody grow apart? I don't know. My brother and sister-in-law are happily married now for 36, seven years, maybe. Okay. That's good. I think. What happened the second time? With me? Yeah, you said you were married twice. Yeah, so the first time we grew apart. The second one also, everything was like, you know, you get out of one, a couple years later you meet someone, you move in together first to make sure it's compatible, mm -hmm. and then a year later you get engaged and married and the whole thing, and she's awesome and he yeah, says all the right things and like different from the first one without revealing too much because you never know who's listening. Mm -hmm. um, and then on my end, things just started changing. Like how? You wanted something else? No, like it wasn't good enough. Whatever I was doing or whatever I offered. Oh, you weren't good enough. Yeah. Or she was complaining a lot? Uh, or yeah. are you sensitive and you can't handle? Because I feel like maybe a lot of women complain a lot. We just like to complain. I think it's our nature. But I don't know, I don't know if we really mean, like a, I think a lot of the complaining stems from we just want attention at the end of the day. I don't think it's like a thing. You know what I mean? I think it's like, look at me, love me, you know? You're saying women want that? Yeah, when they're complaining, it's not usually what they're complaining about. It's, it's more of like a cry for love, you know? Because women just want to feel like Right, so why would it be them? the man's responsibility to have to go through that thought process instead of the woman just saying, hmm, instead of complaining, maybe I should do this. Einstein's definition of insanity. Because men and women are different, and we right. don't know how to say it. But it, men don't know how to understand it. I know. I know. But theoretically, when you do find that person, mm -hmm. then it doesn't take over your life. It enhances your life. Absolutely. So but the fact that you do have all that stuff going on. But then the other person feels like they're at, at some point when they're. You're already killing it. What do you mean? You haven't even met the guy and you're already making excuses why it's not going to work out for him. Right. You overthink. You it's know what my problem is? I'll tell you what my problem is. Tell me what your the, problem is. The, with men, okay? First Are you of listening, all, men? Yeah. First of all, I didn't have a father, so that's number one. What does that mean? So it means that I wasn't really taught what... I was well, looking for the, the wrong... Can I the, ask? What? You were conceived, so at some point you had a biological father. Yeah. My father was in the streets. He said he didn't want kids, and I didn't meet him until I was 12. So he wasn't at all, and your mom, single mom, raised My you by herself? My mom remarried at, wow. when I was like five to another man, and he was okay. He was, I'm not going to, he's okay. He's okay? Yes. Does he have, they, and you have a half sibling? And he has a kid with my mom, and she's my sister. She's you know, 10 years younger than me. Uh -huh. So it's not really a sibling, it's far. Okay. Yeah. So you, well, you did, so, but he was okay. He was okay, but he had his issues and I, I didn't want to be home a lot. So I was just like. So he had his issues or you more had your issues? No, no, they had their issues. And uh -huh. I was like, I felt um like the issues were bigger than me. So I just wanted to get at it. I left home very young. What's very young? 16. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just like, you know, any guy who showed me like a lot. I was like the last one to to bloom in my group. Like as far I was like, you know, um, standoffish with men. But it's like if a guy really pursued me after I rejected him a thousand times, it's always like, I mean, not always, but, you know, like if you really, really, really showed me that he liked me, like I would, I would give in. So my first relationship, I was 14. I had a guy for like three years. He was 19 and he was obsessed with me, but he was like too obsessed with me. So that became like too crazy. But don't you think those are the guys? So 
wait, how did I start? Oh, so this is my problem, right? I don't know any guy that seems like he could be healthy for me. I'm probably not attracted to him. It's not that I don't want to be attracted to him. It's just that I'm attracted to to a certain thing. So wow. how am I going to have sex with this guy and want to have sex with him if I'm if he's a good guy, but I'm not physically attracted to him? So I have to just force myself like a prostitute. I don't like that feeling. I've done that before where I've been with guys. I'm like, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. But I hated sleeping with him. Like, I was like, oh, my God, like, let this shit be over. I just want it to be over. You know what I mean? I mean, you're not a woman. You wouldn't understand because guys could fuck anything, you know, but like as a woman, you want to want. That's not man. so true, by the way. It's not. Well, whatever. I mean, it's 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 different, right? We have different instincts. So, like men are yes, men are hunters, and they just want to they yeah. just want to stoop and then stoop and all day and then whatever. And then they don't nap. even have to, yeah, but they don't even have to talk to the girl ever again. But like, re really, women, we don't want to do that. We if we sleep with you, we want to talk to you again. There are some women, obviously, there's exceptions to that, but most women, if we're sleeping with you, we want to hear from you again. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's different, but I'm just saying that like ha it's hard to, f the guys that are attractive usually treat women but not But why are you good. attracted to them? I mean, who's- There's a consistency of guys you've dated over yes. the past few decades, right? Two yes. decades, whatever. Yes. So they all look like There's strong men, physically what? strong. What? What? Just gorillas? Yeah. Muscle bound. Look at the smile on your face. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth though. I don't so know. So just big but muscle gym gorilla guys that have nothing upstairs. Not all of them. Not all. Yeah. I mean, some of them. Were, but I don't want that anymore, right? So now at this age, I'm like, I definitely don't want to, you know, because my kid's father, he's exceptionally good looking. So I'm like traumatized from like any guy who's like a ladies man, right? So if you're exceptionally good looking, like the things that I used to have to go through, I've, I've never, even with the other guys that were like, Gorilla, I mean, like they were strong, but they weren't like attractive in the face. You know, they just had like the toll and and they were in shape and stuff. But like, he was like, you know, good looking in the face. And like, girls used to leave notes. We go to the supermarket, there'd be like a note on the car. We go out to party, we'd meet couples and stuff. Just like, you know, hey, da da da. We get home. The girl, the the wife of the couple we met, just sent her her tits. I went to Rosh Hashanah dinner. He came with me. The fucking wife. They she was selling like designer stuff, so they exchanged numbers, and then she started like she's married. You know what I'm saying? She's talking to him. You know what I mean? She's telling me he's sexy. I'm just she's getting involved in my business. Like it was just like I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with like I don't want to deal with this. This 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 pretty like he's going to the bathroom. We're going to a restaurant. He's in the bathroom. I'm like what the fuck? Looking for him in the bathroom. He's in the mirror. Like what are you doing? What are like I don't. It was like an experience, like I've never, it was like a twilight zone, you know what I mean? Because it's like, and he felt like he was the prize because every time we'd go outside, we'd have old ladies telling me how lucky I am to be with him and how beautiful he is. And it was just like, it really like fucked me up. Like I, I now when I see men that look like him, that resemble him, I'm like, get the hell away from, I think they're all like that. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, they probably all are get the similar type of attention, you know, because most men are like women. We could put makeup on and we can do stuff to make ourselves somewhat attractive. Men can't, you know, they can go to the gym, but like they can't really put, you know, men are, are, are different. They're not like for their beauty. So like exceptionally beautiful men, the attention, they don't live the same life that we do. You know what I mean? They get a lot of things for free. And they get a lot of attention from even men too. You know what I mean? Like they get things from men. They get things from women. They live a different life experience. And it's like that really changed my perspective of like, I don't even want that anymore. So now I'm just stuck in, in a in a like, okay, well, I don't want that. But then like, what's the alternative to that? I don't know if I want that either. You know what I mean? I might, I might mentally want that, but I haven't met someone. But you're painting yourself into a corner. Yeah, I'm in a corner. So that's what right. I'm saying. I'm not looking because I'm like, I've accepted the fact that there's nobody out there for me. So that's healthy. It's not healthy. sarcastic. I'm saying that's very healthy. It is? Because that's kind of where I am. Because I'm so abstract and I'm so far out there. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to find a woman mm -hmm. that's that level hot and <laughs> that, yeah, and that level good in bed and that level that she wants me, but she doesn't want to have 
marriage or babies or she doesn't want money. I've, I've said this to myself that I could not see myself with anyone that makes less than me. You know how women say that all the time? They want a guy that has bank. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any long term anything with anyone unless they have bank. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I went some through men two say, divorces. Because some men say the opposite. That they don't even want a girl that has money. Why? Of, because she has a strong, usually yeah, has a strong. Yeah, that's person. hot. I a guess confident for, woman for some guys. I oh guess. my god! Yeah, for the, the the secure guys. Right, the secure guys. I'm not. I'm not that's intimidated the, by. A, that's the problem. By they're, a woman, they're insecure because they think someone else is going to take her. You know, or I don't know. She'll eat easy. She's easier to leave you if she has money. But that same chick, she has to have everything else also. What do you mean? What else? Uh, every, everything. I mean, again, there's the, looks, right? Yes. And I'm not just talking, I'm like, I'm very specific when it comes to certain features. I'm, I understand. So. Aren't we also, as you see how it's, it, it, both men and women are, right? Yeah. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. So there's, there's that, and she, and she, uh, she has to want me for me. Yes. Not because of money, not because she wants to get married, not right. because she wants to make you babies. you want a real connection, Right. Right. Right, so we're all. But I also need my in a conundrum here. Quiet alone time. Absolutely. Which I haven't had for the first fifty years of my life. So you're enjoying it now. Oh, I sit back, smoke a J, have a beer if I want, watch a Marvel movie sixteen times in a row. You know. Okay. It's not a bad life. Okay. But that's because I've been living with people forever. You know, from my parents' house, I got married. You know, Queens, you grow up in Queens, you live with your parents, you get married, live with the wife, do that for 20 years, then finish with that one, get into another one for another eight years. And then you're, you're divorced and you're like, oh, I get to pick my own couch. Yes. Oh, joy. Right. I got it. Got to pick my own dishes. Bachelor gray. I threw them out and I got new ones this week. How nice. That is nice. It's so nice. So you're not missing love then? I don't know what that is. What is that? What is that? Tell me, what is that? What is what is love? I don't, I mean, I can't really tell you. I guess someone who you can call like that. That's a friend. What else? I, what is this? I don't know what this magic. What? We're, we're pro, again, we're programmed into this fantasy of the, of the movies and the billboards and the happily ever after and the couple meets and the off into the sunset on the back of this huge swan. Come on. I've seen my brother and his wife sometimes like this, sometimes like this. And then eventually they, there's no, I, I, you know, they, they, nobody feels the same way as the first time. The right. first, so it, it, it's a graph, it's statistics, it's numbers. It levels off. It does level off. Every, every time your heart gets broken, it changes you. How funny is it that to drive a car, you need a license. Mm -hmm. To fly a plane, you need a license. All these licenses, contractors license, doctors, lawyers, they all have to be renewed every few years, right? Mm -hmm. But a marriage license is a forever. You need to renew that shit. There should be like a five, 10 year limit on marriages. What about the kids? What about the kids? I don't know. What about the Bible? What you about know, the Bible? It says he you know, What happened to the kids thing? The kids, the kids will survive. I we know, fuck but... up the kids anyway. <laughs> My kids are fucked up. What are you going to do? You do the best you can. You keep talking to them. You open lines of communication and they're half decent human beings. They all have jobs. They all have lives. Some of them are married, you know? Yeah. Kids. If you're not happy, I, okay. nobody's okay, happy. Okay, so this is another thing. All right, so you want to renew it every five years, but the woman's like, I'm getting older now. So it's not, it's, it, I feel like for men, it's okay. You're getting older. But that's part of your agreement. If know, you but, know that this marriage is a 10 year prospect and you already have in your head, okay, we're going to pop out one or two kids. I have to keep working because at some point I'm going to continue working. What about the years that I'm not working? All of a sudden it's a realistic, pragmatic approach. I know, but women you're don't want to have to find a new man at fucking 50. Well, they don't have the old man. I don't know. If the guy wants out, if either one wants out, they're not together anyway. Yeah, but 75% of divorces start with the women. That's what they say. That's just who files first. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. So That's what so, Jordan Peterson said. Yeah. Okay. So let's say it's true. So what? 
I don't fucking know. Exactly. I've never been married. I don't know. I can't. I can't. So back can't to the original thing. Marriage. There's no benefit. But the Bible says that. Do okay, you believe so in be- the Bible? Do I believe in the Bible? Yeah. I believe that there is a Bible. I, I don't mean, know. There is a Bible. And I mean, if we all lived by the principles of the Bible, we probably have easier lives, wouldn't you say? Well, for, I mean, I don't know. I question the whole concept in, in the past few years. Like, wh- what? Did he really split the sea? Did he really hit a rock and uh, the bread came down from the sky? Or did Jesus walked on water? Or 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 you get 70 virgins when you're a martyr or whatever? I mean, like, so which one is wrong? They can't all be right. I mean, well, the Jews are the chosen people. Yeah, says who? The Jews? <laughs> there you go. I don't know. The Christians were the chosen people. Remember where they were killing people across Europe and the Middle East because they wanted to, right? So then they were. Well, I just feel like a godless society would not be a good society. Like, because, you know. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Yeah. Whatever belief system you have, if it's religion, if it's the universe, if it's the power of nature, if it's uh, it's all just random, you all end up in the same place. We're here. Okay, now what? You're going to be a good person? You're going to go out killing people? Or are you going to try to do I mean, your we best? We shouldn't lose it, though. No, for sure not. I think it has great value. Yeah, it does. I just saw something yesterday about Shaq's family going to a Shabbat, doing a Shabbat dinner. Yeah. I thought that was very cool. Yeah. I like Shabbat dinners. Well, not a, not, all, not all of them. Uh, Tom Hanks' son was here. He said he did a lot of Shabbat dinners. Yeah, a lot of bar mitzvahs, and then he went off on the noises he was making, and you were cracking up. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was interesting. Yeah. Um, so? So, what else? So, if you go, hypothetically speaking, you're on a first date. Mm-hmm. And you agree 7.30. Okay. You show up. Mm-hmm. 7.30, 7.35, whatever. You're a girl. Try to be a couple minutes late. Right. 7.45 rolls around. You're there 15 minutes. And you don't hear from him. You don't hear from him or he's on his way and he's late and he's Well, he said before that he's on his way, but then 7.30 rolls around. How long do you wait before you 20 kiss? minutes. You don't hear from him for 20 minutes? I'm leaving. You're leaving and it's done? Done. He calls you or he texts you after that says, hey, I hit traffic. I'm there in 10 minutes. No. Well, if, if I left already and I'm home and he said, I'll be there in 10 minutes, I'm sorry to hear that. I spoke to a girl last night that said- she she will not leave the house mm-hmm. until he texts that he's on the way. Let me know she goes, let me know when you're on the way so I know to leave also. Yeah, I mean for I would definitely confirm before I leave the house if we're still doing this. That stuff is fascinating. But yeah, I think I'm 15 minutes. Okay. And I'm the guy. Yeah, I mean it's disrespectful, right? I think so. Yeah. But again, that's, I think that's, you just get to a point in your life where you're not willing to put up with anything. I know. So that's why it's harder to meet. The, yeah. Back, it's harder backs to you meet. Into people. the corner. Well, the other flip side of that is that you're only now realizing your value. It's true. Do you think you're special? Yes. Very special? Yes. So you think it's going to be easy finding an equal or better guy? But doesn't everyone think they're special? No. No, absolutely not. Most people don't think they're special. Most people cannot look in the mirror and say, you are, you are awesome. The vast majority of people cannot say that. I don't know that. I don't, I don't look in the mirror and say I'm awesome, but I know, I feel Why that not? I'm special. I don't know. I don't do like this mirror affirmation thing. I think it's weird. I'm, I'm not re- saying religiously. I'm saying once just to see if you can do it and keep eye Well, contact. I do it in the car. I do it in the car. I talk to myself in the car. That's good. Yeah. That's healthy. Yeah. I think it is. No, I'm not joking. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. It's part of I mean, introspection. I have, to, I have to like, you know, sometimes I have to like, I have my thing like, God is good. Everything is good. Life is good. Like I repeat the same things. Like nothing is wrong. Like when I'm upset or something or I'm like, I find myself in a dark place. I have to tell like everything is good. There is nothing to be upset. I try to like talk to myself like a therapist because right. sometimes I get into like a deep, dark place for no reason. Everything is good. Like I have everything. I have everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? I have a kid. I have my kids healthy. I'm healthy. Yeah. And and I have, I don't want anything more than what I have. That's like interesting because when 
when things are going well, we say, thank God, right? Things are going well, thank God, appreciate God and or the universe or whatever, right? Yeah. When things are going poorly. Say why? It's me. But that's not balanced, right? So either take down the God a little bit and accept your accomplishments and the good things you do. Or when you do get down low, take it off your shoulders a little bit and say, hey, God, come share the burden on this side with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just. It's not always um, bad to be upset. You don't have to. Well, sometimes like, you're sad for no reason. Maybe there is a reason though. Right. Then you take the shrooms to reveal the reason. You try at least. Or you think about it. You can figure it out without the shrooms. The shrooms are good, though. I've only done it once. Really? They're so Maybe great. Maybe twice. I like shrooms. They give me uh, introspective, whatever. Outrospective. I just gives me the answers. That introspection. I'm looking for. Introspection. Yeah, hiking does that for me. Yeah. Especially if I take a joint with me. That's good. Yeah, I get to think all kinds of, and nobody bothers you. Nobody talks to you. You like to hiking you. by yourself? Yeah. Oh, that sounds horrible. Only by myself. I've had people, oh, you hike, where do you go? To Mescal Canyon, Pacific Palisades. And so, oh, that sounds awesome. Can I come with you? No. It's a disaster. No, absolutely because not. Because they're going to ruin your hike. They kill it. I know. I I'd gotta, be one of those people who definitely destroy your hike. And then I got to talk to them for an hour and a half. What could be worse? Yeah. Yeah, you have to either, it's either you like it or, I can't hike unless I have someone talking to me. I need to be distracted from what's going on around me because I don't like hiking. I don't like working out in general. So I like always, yesterday I, I live, you know, I was walking in my area and I was walking with my dog and I was like, I need a person. And then two girls from Brooklyn happened to walk appeared. out, appeared in the middle of Laurel Canyon. And I started walking with them and they helped me walk like 15, 20 minutes more. And, but that's the only way I could do it. If someone's talking to me, distracting me, I could do it. Or if I have like a drill sergeant type of uh, trainer which I've had before, they're good. But don't you think that means you have to challenge yourself to do it alone? I just said self-mastery. You said you didn't believe in that. What? Remember I was saying you have to master yourself and you're like, you don't believe in mastery. Right. Not, but that's, that's part of I'm it, I'm just right? saying the semantics of the word master because it's, it's never like, you never- I don't want to do it myself. Why, Why do I have to do it? I don't want to. I don't, I don't enjoy it by myself. Like you enjoy it by yourself, right? You said that someone comes to you, yeah. they bother you. I've taken people in the past. It's not like I refuse. No, I, I understand. So I've walked by myself in the past and it's not like I refuse, but I would prefer somebody walking with me, distracting me from the fact that it's hot and I'm sweating. I'll go hiking with you one time. Okay. you. I, I, won't, I don't know if I can do that to you. Why? Because I, I complain a lot. That's the whole okay. Way. I'm, I'm only going to be listening to like 10% of it anyway. Okay. Sounds good. It's an official invitation. Thank you. Wow. Uh, I'll consider. Okay. You don't have to answer now. No okay. pressure. All right. What do you think about dating single mothers? <sighs> um, in terms of what, like, is it a good thing or a bad thing? No. Like, does it deter you? No. No. Do you think it deters men or is it just something that people say on Instagram or like on no, podcasts? No, it, it depends where you are in life. I think a younger guy that doesn't have kids or was never married, mm -hmm. I think it's a deterrent yeah, to marry. Sure. I, I married a single mom the second time. Okay. How old and was your kid? Her kid was seven at the time. Mm. I knew him till he was 14 or 15. Was it hard to separate from him? Uh, no. She told me to stay away from him, don't speak to him ever again, and all this kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So, and this is a kid that I treated almost better than my own. I did a father-son bar mitzvah trip with him to Israel. That's what I'm saying. Did it affect you when you guys got divorced because no. you couldn't talk to the – no? No. You were fine with it? Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't – I think there's something wrong with me. I don't have that emotional need. I don't miss – like I have kids here in New York and in Israel. I don't miss them. If I want to talk to them, I pick up the phone and I talk to them. It's not like I – you know, I, I don't miss anyone. I feel that. I don't miss anyone either. Like my mom's there. My brother's there. I adore my my brother. In my eyes, he's one of the most amazing human beings on the planet. Really? What's amazing about him? The things he's accomplished. His his The amount of empathy that this human has. 
Yeah, when when I when I was going through my first divorce, this mm-hmm. is public, huh? When I was when I was going through the first divorce, uh, I flew to New York, and I said, uh, and and I sent an email to my mom and to my dad and to my brother and his wife and my sister, and I said, you know, I'm coming to New York. This is what's going on. Get all the stupid comments and questions out of the way, so when I get there, we can have like a decent conversation right because you you announced to your family that you're getting divorced it's a pretty significant life event right especially the first time second time okay <laughs> not such a big deal whatever right you know it's expected um so i get there and and you know right away my mom's like well i never liked her anyway and da, 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 da. yeah yeah whatever it's not not secrets you know but it's not but it's my mom's nonsense it, it automatically became about her right my dad's response Nothing. I was the last to know. <laughs> I'm like, again, it's about you? Like, what? this is my parents. Are, and they're not bad people. They were amazing parents, you know. But that's what it is, you know. And then my, I go out that Saturday night with my brother and my sister-in-law, and we sit down at this restaurant, kosher restaurant, New York, Italian. Sit with the first thing out of my brother's mouth is, we are here for you. Oh, that's nice. I'm like, you motherfucker. Again, you did the right thing. Oh, my God. Like, and he's a busy guy. So I, I rarely speak to him. But when we do and when I need him, he's there. That's important. You know? Yeah, for sure. He's a doctor. What kind of doctor? He's a doctor at Mount Sinai. Shh. Mount Sinai. Like a regular doctor? Or he's like a surgeon. No, he's like a doctor, but he's also the dean of the medical school. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's a good guy. Solid guy. It's rare. Yeah. But that's, you know, you go through elementary school and they see, oh, we have another so-and-so in the class. You know, the younger brother, the first one who was not oh, only a straight- the youngest? I was the middle. I am the middle. Okay. Yeah, I was a fuck up in school. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah. I didn't graduate high school. Me neither. Ah. I took my GD. Yeah, I don't even know if I got that. I went to Queensboro. Took a year there, then went to Queens. I went to Madison High School in Brooklyn. Mm. I didn't really go. I used to just cut school and smoke weed all the time. I didn't start smoking weed till I was 45. Can you believe that? Yeah. Oh, I was so good. It happens. Yeah. I'm trying to make up for it now, though. It's good. It's a good place to be, California, for weed. Just for weed, though. Just for weed. And the weather. And the weather. Not the people. Nothing else. You, can, you can't say that. I can say that. Why? I've been here for 12 years. I know, but you can't say that LA people suck. I can say LA people suck. <gasps> You're going to have, no one's going to come on your show anymore. They're not from LA and they're going to come anyway. Especially after this. Right. <laughs> no, LA is just, I don't know, like the homeless people bother me. The people, I've learned to deal with them. Like in the beginning, you know, I was myself. And then I kind of like got uh, like a little more polished. I stopped being as aggressive to people. I stopped talking to strangers, started keeping my opinions to myself and uh, didn't react as much to things that would make me react. It actually made me, I think it made me like a more better, I don't know if it's better, but I'm less reactive to things. You know what I mean? Because before I used to be an animal. What does that mean? Like I I used to just act very aggressive. uh, Aggressive and loud and disgusting. Like I used to go to the dog park when I first moved here. I have a mastiff. I have a big dog. Okay. A mastiff. Yeah. And I got him. Why'd you get a mastiff? I'm about to tell you. So I got the dog because I lived downtown and there was a lot of homeless people. And I always wanted a big dog. I just like, I'm I'm an animal person. So I like horses. I like animals in general. So I always wanted a big dog. And like, obviously I couldn't have one in New York. So I found one on Craigslist for like adoption. And I would just walk with him every day because he would protect me from the homeless people. Like when I go to Starbucks in the morning. He would come with me at night, whatever he would come with. So he like protected me. But obviously I lived in an apartment in downtown. So I needed to like get his energy out. He was this big ass dog. So when he was a puppy, I used to take him to the dog park. Everything was fine. I'd go every day, twice a day, whatever. Until he got to a certain age where he realized his size. And just, I think the breed in general is a little bit aggressive. So like sometimes he would like get into tussles at the dog park. 
But I'm from New York and I'm just like, they're dogs. Like nothing happened. So it's like not a big deal. But to them, it was a big deal. And they had a dog park Facebook group. I'll never, I'll never forget it. Um, well, actually, this is a long story, but I'm just going to, I'm not even going to tell the beginning. They had a Facebook group basically, and they were all talking shit about me on this Facebook group. I didn't know about it because I don't enter Facebook groups. And I'd bring my dog and people started recording me. They said they wanted to like dep deposition. I don't know, like get some type of petition against me because they wanted me to stop coming to the dog park. And I got so fucking mad. Like I would like, I like curse the guy out, screaming at him and just like ghetto shit that you see on the internet. Like I used to act like that, but I don't, I don't act like that anymore. Now. You're more refined. I'm refined. I've calmed down. I don't react to things. I'm, I, I like go into the car and scream well, instead. Why? why did you, why do you need to react to these things? I know. And I don't, I'm saying now that I'm more much, but when I coming from Brooklyn, just being so like around so many ghetto loud people and it's normal there like you could tell someone in new york to fuck off and they're not gonna like right they're Life not gonna on. care yeah right. but it's here it's yeah. actually a, a nice greeting yeah like you you know yeah it is so like in new york you could tell each other to fuck off and then you can go to lunch after right here it's a little more serious you know what i mean delicate yeah i think it's more delicate than serious yeah you can't tell someone to fuck off here so I've 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 calmed down, but it makes you more secluded because you're like you can't really. These people are like kind of wishy washy. But that's a good thing. Yeah. Ultimately, no. Yeah, but then you're you less likely to make new friends, so you better have old friends. That for me personally, I've had a lot of guy friends mm, that were like you didn't my have guy friends. Yes, I did. Oh, men and women can be friends. Are we going there? Are we doing that one today? Um, I think they could be friends, but I mean, I, I just said, yeah, if you, if you want to take it there, I don't think they're going to tell you no. Then you're not friends because they want something. I don't know if they want it, but I don't think they'll reject it. The only reason they're talking to you is because they want it and they know one day they may have it. I don't know. Anyway, I had a lot of guy friends, but obviously every time they get a girlfriend, they stop talking to me or they get married and they stop talking to you. So I had this. you're not friends. I guess I had this one guy in New York. We were friends for 20 years, never touched him, nothing. And he was like my therapist. Every time something went wrong, I would call him and he just knew what to say to me, like to calm me down. And like we could talk for hours, but I wasn't physically attracted to him at all. Like I would never see myself having sex with him, but he was like my therapist. Like I would I could talk to him every day, all day. Like and he would. But but what? So yeah, I don't know, but he, you don't. He missed his opportunities. No, but he didn't have an opportunity. That's in what his head, there's always an, in the man's head, there's always opportunity. So once, so yeah, so he got married. He caught me off, and uh, now like it's hard. You know, you can't like meet new the, the friends. The hard part is the realization that they were never really your friends. That's right. the hard part. Right. I guess, but I'm saying it's hard to meet new friends when you get older. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Because now you're not just a ball, you have facets, you have different parts of you, you have, you know, and, and, and you're more in tune with who you are and what you want in your life. And every piece of shit that rolls by is not going to be included in that circle. Yeah. Forget about the inner circles. But even the outer circle, who wants those people? I, me, I have one, one or two people that I hang out with. I go, to, I, I, I have a poker group. I play poker. Yeah. I used to play a lot of poker. I used to be a degenerate gambler. I used to go to like underground poker games. Yeah, me too. And like casinos. I used to go to commerce even. Commerce? Yeah, and play poker there. Degenerate. Degenerate. I've been there. I have a cart. <laughs> I saw Don Cheadle there once. I played with him. Oh, really? Yeah. I've seen some people there. Yeah. I mean, there's nowhere else to go out here. It's just far now. It's too far for me. Yeah, it's a hassle. Yeah, I I made a video and I got like four thousand hate comments on it. That's awesome. It is. I said that three hundred. All you want to see the video? Yeah. Okay. Now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, let's do it. It's only like thirty seconds. Oh. It's not like a YouTube video. That's what I'm saying. I got four thousand hate comments. <sighs> I don't even know if I should show it to you, but. 
like they think they can send you like three hundred dollars a month and they did something and you have to give them like good job you did such a good job thank you for your three hundred it's like bro that three hundred won't even last me a week with my kid like my daycare is fourteen hundred dollars a month just the daycare and I have a nanny you know what I'm saying and then what about food every time I go food shopping it's a hundred wait so what are they angry about so what was the hate comment. It's it's. A Wait, what lot. are you saying here? That if you're with a guy, I'm saying that if you have a if you're a single mom with a guy and he only sends you three hundred dollars a month, it's not enough. What do you mean? Why? Okay, we'll back up. You're a single mom. Yes. You're a single mom. Mm -hmm. We're dating. No, the father of the child. Oh, the father of the child, three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, what is that? What he can afford? No. I wasn't saying that's what he could afford. I said that's what he gives. And even who, even a homeless person could have, gets more on SSI than three hundred dollars. So, but I got four. I got four thousand hate comments on that video, saying like, "It's your kid," and blah 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 blah. Like, I feel like you're saying that you're only getting three hundred dollars a month from the ex from the the. the baby I didn't say that. I said these men. The, so a man that sends three hundred dollars a month. Yeah, is not enough. You agree with that? It's not enough. Yeah. I, I mean, I even if you live in the Midwest, I don't think $300 buys much nowadays. Right. So especially if you're trolls. raising a kid. I shouldn't, I shouldn't care too much. First of all, why do you care at all? I get the funny, and I don't get a lot of hate ever. Mm -hmm. Like, I, my, I, I, the stuff I post, usually I get a few hundred comments. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're all adoring. Really? But every once in a while, I get a hate one. And, and the majority of my viewers, followers, whatever, are They're women. women. Vast, like 35 years and up. I got some sisters on there that will beat the shit out of anyone that talks bad about me. Really? Oh, they come to my defense right away. That's good. But they know. They know what? They, they've they seen my stuff and I put my thoughts out there, my high thoughts of the day and my shit show and all this other stuff. And they they get it. They agree with you. Um, you, you, most of the time, yeah. You told me that guys who have a lot of money don't treat women good. You told me I should find a teacher. No, I said don't discount the fact that he makes a little bit less than you. See, look, here it is. We we have these uh, standards that we create. Mm -hmm. And every time you go out with someone and every time you live another day, you add a little bit to that standard. Oh, I want someone empathetic. I want someone sincere. I want someone that won't cheat on me. I want someone that won't lie to me. I want someone hot. I want someone that's good in bed. I want, I want, I want, I want. Mm -hmm. Right? Ideally, they should be tens all the way across. Mm -hmm. Realistically, you're willing to give and take. A, he doesn't have to be so good looking but these areas are full or he doesn't have to have this much money, but the rest of them are but okay. You just told me that men don't need to settle down because they don't need women for anything. Cause I you mean, can get sex anywhere at, at this point. I know. So, but everyone's going to get to your point eventually, right? Yeah. More or less. Listen, so what the, hope do we have? Cause once we get older, we're fucked. Why are you fucked? Because we're older and we're less de desirable than these younger what women. What do you need? You, what are you looking for a guy for? Women, we don't want to be alone. What so we should mean? just be, everyone should just be alone is what you're saying. No. So what are but you saying? But be ready to be alone. Prepare yourself. But some people don't want to be alone. It doesn't matter what you want. It's not up to you. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah. You think you're going to find that one guy? How many of those... How many are out there for you with all your requirements? I don't know. Very, very few, right? right? So you're talking about- One. One. Let's say three. I'll okay. give you even better. Three out of eight billion people. That's it? Four billion, half of them are women, let's say. And, Whatever and it half is. of them are gay. Gay and kids and older and younger and, and not Jewish or not, not Muslim or not Christian or not black, not white. There's an insane- And it's the- so. Stop with the nonsense. Stop looking. Stop hunting. Stop worrying. And just do you. But don't you feel like a life without love or companionship? You is don't have love? Is that the problem? I can't speak because I have love. I have my kids. Like I said, I have my nephews. I have my, my family. I got more love than I know how to handle. I have a little bit of love, but it's like it's it's distant love. You know, it's not like in my house, love. I have love for my kid, but my kid is three and he. It's different. Yeah. But like, I have people who love me, but they're not around me every day. But you, 
but you have people who love you. Yes. Okay, so you're not hungry for love. But it would be nice to have someone it would in be the nice. bed yes. at night. You know what I mean? Or like uh, me cooking breakfast and us like laughing and shit. You know what I mean? And just like me calling him after my day and just telling him how it went. And he's like. But those are the movies. No, that's nonsense. That's not true. I had people like that that I was able to do that with. It just didn't last. Exactly. But, but it existed. It existed temporarily. So you're saying it's not, that doesn't last. So people uh, can't. You just said your wife, if it does, your, your brother and his wife are. If it does, it's rare. Okay. And not everyone is wired like that. Not everyone is programmed the same. Everyone's genetically different, right? Some people are genetically dispositioned to become alcoholics. Okay. So? So not everyone is meant... To love? To love and mate and have a life like that. It's, you're, 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 you're cookie-cutting humans. You can never cookie-cutter everyone. Yeah, but everybody wants someone, I feel like. I don't know if everybody wants... I don't know. I'm... <laughs> I met someone okay. a few months ago. Okay. And she's a single mom. Mm-hmm. She lives an hour and a half away. That's far. We see each other on weekends for a day. Okay. We hang out. We have a good time together. Um, where were they going with this? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, I said everyone wants somebody. Right. So 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 I'm with her. But she and I've told her she's not forever. I'm not getting married. You told her. Yeah, hundred percent. Not forever. No. What? So she's just a fuck. No, I have a nice time. I enjoy her company. She doesn't want anything from me. She just enjoys my company and being with me. All right. So this is a new thing we're gonna do now. We should just put up ads for a, a life partner slash roommate. If you want to split half the bills and you're okay with what I got going on in my life, and I'm okay with what you go, got going on in, in your life, we Why just you merge it things? together because it's expensive to live. So move. I, I don't understand what you're saying. Now you want to find the guy because it's expensive to live? What happened to the whole love? That, no, I'm saying in that general- That birdie went out the window? Well, I, it would be better to have people to share your life with who could just pay half the bills. It'd be easier, wouldn't it? So we're talking about money. I don't know what the fuck. I mean, at this point, that's all I could really- I don't know. Like, that would be helpful. Which brings me back to A. Stop with the hunting stuff. I don't hunt. You are hunting. You are looking. You're talking not, about it. I'm talking about it because I have a podcast. I'm not hunting and I'm not looking. I don't go anywhere. I come to the podcast. I go to the supermarket and I come. I'm with my kid. I don't go out. I barely. Why work don't you go out? Because I don't drink. I don't, what does that have to do with anything? I don't drink. I don't really like people that much. So I'm not hunting. I don't, I'm not on any dating apps. I don't contact anyone. So I'm not hunting anything. If I meet somebody and it happens, which I highly doubt. Then it happens, but why are you highly doubting it? Because you just said not everybody's meant to be with somebody, and I agree with that. I, I, like you said, there might be three people in the world; they might not even live in LA. So, so that's why I doubt it. Because I've met the guys that are. Right, in but LA. it doesn't mean you should become a hermit. I'm not a hermit. I go to the podcast. I go to the supermarket. I go home. I mean, there's an occasional dog park in there. I think. No, I go to meetings and stuff. I don't have much of a social life. You have like, no friends out here. I have friends out here. Okay. They don't go out? Yeah, but I don't want to go. Like, I'm not... There's nothing that... I don't, I don't want to go to a bar. I don't want to go anywhere loud with a lot of people. I don't... Like, I went out to a, a party on Saturday. I finally left my house. I went to a TikTok party. It was a bunch of young people. And I just sat there and just, people were just coming up to me and talking to me because I look like money. But other than that, it's like, what am I doing here? Like, I could be home like comfortable well that's a work thing you're there because you're supposed to be networking or doing but whatever. i don't enjoy like a bunch of strangers around me that's but not that's enjoyable. part of your job yeah but that's not so wh where would i be going i like to shop shop i like horses okay so why don't you do that because there's no horses nearby what are you talking about i can't what? find any horses i can't find horses that I can ride the, sorry, the way I need to ride, like, it's a long story, I'll tell you, after the podcast, but it's just hard to find. But, I mean, yeah, I would do that. I like to travel. But other than that, I don't really like to go out. I'm not really, like, a go out, go out person, like, it's Go not out fun. and people watch? No. Oh, it's so fun. I don't see the point in that. So It's just, it's just fun. 
get to figure out their lives by just by the way they move and act. And what you start talking to strangers? Sometimes. Okay. I, yeah. I guess I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. Maybe I'm turned off by people as a whole. I think so. Yeah. I think you're damaged goods. I am damaged goods. We all are damaged goods, but it's, everyone's a different kind of damaged goods. Okay. Well, they say knowledge is power, so now you know it's half the battle. What, that I'm damaged? Yeah. What are you going to do? As long as I have money, I'll be all right. That's all I care about. You just got to figure, you just gotta figure out the childhood. You didn't get enough attention as a kid. That's all. It, that's all everything boils down to. Yeah, what are you going to do about it it's in the past? It's present, though. Because if you're still that one that's the loudest in the room, that's... I'm not the loudest in the room. I'm not saying room. you are. Relax. Right. Don't get defensive on me. We're not there. Um, but if if you're... if uh, I used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not because you got or didn't get the right attention. You, you didn't get the right kind of attention. That's what it was. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was trying to live out my life as as good as I can. You know? I've been to therapy and I've done a lot of It doesn't really help. No, you got to figure it out on your own. Yeah. That's why I take shrooms. That's good. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Almost done. No, I, I think we're good. I think we covered a lot. All right. So uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you another time. Thanks for having me.